I was thinking about your um, some of your writings on economics, and you um, you've cited some uh, papers and articles that have been skeptical of sort of conventional views on economics. And you know, I think you focus a lot on the uh, 2000, uh, 2008 crash um, and how they didn't know a lot. My view of economics compared to other social sciences is. Uh, look, if you took the average third world country and you replaced like their, you know, their, uh, their dictator with an economist, things would get better probably. Yes. Um, I'm not sure that's right with sociologists or political scientists or anthropologists or women's studies, you know, degrees. I think the Afghanistan war was to a large extent. These people were basically, uh, these people were in charge to a large extent. Um, do you, do you think you're maybe a little bit you're, you're you're a little bit too hard on economics because you know the, for the complexity of what it's studying and as far as you know what it's gotten right and you know the decline of poverty you know in the third world as soon as countries started listening to uh, economists aren't they doing something better than most of the social sciences? Well, they are. I think they are. They try to be empirically driven. There are really, uh, I think, deep truths uncovered within economics, I would say primarily within microeconomics. So if you ask, ask about how do market forces, uh, you know, shape prices or how, how do prices, how do prices work as a signal for organizing your economy? I think those things are clearly correct. Um, when you get more toward macroeconomics, you know, it's yeah. almost like a kind of like storytelling because the number of degrees of freedom that could affect your economy that you have to deal with is so large that it's hard to imagine that it's sufficiently under empirical control that you can really get to uh, strong conclusions about your theory or your model based on empirical data. There's just not enough examples. Um, really, I think serious kind of people who tend toward rigor or being self-critical within economics admit all those things um, that, that, I, that I wrote about. Um, so I don't think I don't think my take on economics is totally outside the mainstream of like very critical, deep thinking economists. But the average econ prof would just reflexively defend themselves and just say like, "Oh no, we're real science. Leave me alone. Stop bugging me." I have so. I have this suspicion about macroeconomics. Uh, I have a suspicion that Keynesianism was basically. It won in the marketplace of ideas because it's sort of the most convenient things in the world for governments, right? It like gives you an excuse to just spend a lot of money. You don't really have to think about like too hard about how you spend it. And like when you know when the justification for central planning, when we see that doesn't work, Keynesianism just goes to governments and say, spend a lot of money in certain circumstances. And it's like you could see why governments would like this, but how solid is, is that science? Uh, I, I don't know if this, I'm not, I'm far outside my range of expertise, but do, do you have any thoughts well, on that? You know, I, on a very fundamental level, um, there's an economist, I think named Colander, who um, surveys um, economists, including PhD students at top departments. And he asks some questions like, um, do economists test theories? And it's a very deep question because because it's asking this question that I alluded to earlier, which is that if your models are so complicated, like I think if you're a development economist, you could list easily a dozen variables which could affect whether a particular country is going to have strong economic growth, right? Like uh, what's their level of education? What's their commitment toward education? What's their, you know, how much corruption is there? You know, you could list 15 variables. Like, is there a neighbor that's uh, threatening to overtake, you know, invade them? You know, you could list 15 variables and then you can ask, well, if I'm trying to test the effect of these 15 variables and I only have like, I have like a hundred examples, but I'm in a 15 dimensional space, how well can I do? And, and I like even the most, uh, you know, the most, uh, the, a beginning economics student who's a little bit more mathematically inclined would just point out that, yeah, you're right. You can't, you can't do hypothesis testing if, if, if what Steve just said is true. Right. So this guy Colander, he surveys, um, you know, both, I think both economists and, and grad students in economics departments, and, you know, some of them understand this point, some of them don't. Um, one of the main things that I found most tragic in his surveys, he, he asked like, are there fundamental disagreements within economics? And it's it's kind of close to uncomfortably close to 50-50, where 50% of them say, no, we don't have fundamental disagreements with each other, like about whether Keynesianism is an accurate description of you know macroeconomics or not. And 50% of them say we do have fundamental disagreements. But it just the fact that the field can be polarized like that, like isn't the fact that these 50% disagree with each other imply that for sure they have fundamental disagreements with because they have a fundamental disagreement about whether economists disagree about fundamentals. 
So the whole thing, it shows you the whole thinking within the field is not coherent. It's not even equilibrated properly. So the, you, you can go to a department and find a really strong Keynesian true believer. And you can go to another department or maybe even the same department and find a guy who's a George Mason kind of, um, you know, completely anti-Keynesian Hayekian guy. And uh, they live with each other, right? Uh, we don't really have that in physics where one guy says special relativity is wrong and the other guy says special <laughs> relativity is right. Well, you have, I mean, you have the, like the interpretations of quantum mechanics, right? I mean, the, there's some people who think the multi-worlds uh, is correct and some people who don't, right? And that, that seems pretty fundamental. That is the most, but we agree that we disagree. And uh, we, we actually most would say that uh, in the places where there are these disagreements, it's because there's not enough data to uh, resolve the issue. So we, we were lacking some experimental capability to test the issue. Um, it's generally not a disagreement about how experiments are interpreted and things like this. Um, but anyway, I, I, I'm not, I, I think like if you live through something like 2008 and in while 2008 is happening, while the financial crisis is happening, you, you go down the hall and start talking to your economist colleague. And then you realize the economist colleague doesn't actually know what a credit default swap is, but at the same time is giving you some long spiel about what's happening in the economy. So I'm in a weird position because half, more than half of the theoretical physicists that I trained with, was educated with, ended up on Wall Street in hedge funds and creating these instruments. And I considered that as a career option for some time. So I, I had carefully studied lots of things like options pricing theory and um, derivatives and all those, all the math that's required for to be a quant on Wall Street, I understood pretty well. So I was really shocked when I, the academic economists that I was speaking to, and these are very prominent people actually, because I was actually invited because I was blogging about it. I was invited to a bunch of conferences about the credit crisis, where most of the people at the conference, or at least half of them, were economists, right? And so when you when you meet them and they're ma they're, they're you know they're on the one hand they're giving these amazing quotes to the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times about the crisis, and then you start questioning them in detail about well, do you know how these mortgage backed securities are constructed? No. Uh, do you know what firms are buying? What firms are selling? What the incentive structure looks like for the guy who's building the portfolio? No. Well, where does your opinion come from? Well, from nowhere actually, honestly. So it's it's kind of absurd. Thank you.